We've got our MIDI input quantized set, and let's do some more MIDI recording. I have another instrument track called up, and I loaded in Expand, and I loaded in one of the drum kit presets, and I've named it Drums. Now, what I want to do is loop record so that I can record one pass of, let's say, the kick and snare and another pass with the hi-hat. Now, I'm going to use Command with the left bracket key to zoom the display. I want to view my clip all in one window over here. And MIDI recording rounds to the bar, so when we stopped before when I recorded the bass, it rounded off past the bar line. My last note might have been a bit long. So if I'm using the smart tool like I am now, and I position the tool at the end of the clip, it'll turn into this trim tool, and I can trim and snap it right to the end of the eighth bar, and that's because I'm in grid mode over here, and the grid is set to bar lines, so everything is snapping or quantizing to even increments of a bar. So with this selected, it's now set that time range in the time ruler, which is what I want. I want to loop record over this whole time range. So we want to make sure that the link timeline and edit selection is enabled, which it is right now. And I'm going to record enable my track. Now the important thing to do here is we want to go into loop playback mode. So I'm going to control click there and cycle through. And there it is with the loop icon. Now I have the metronome on and I'm going to enable the MIDI merge over here so that each time it passes over the cycle or through the cycle it's going to add on to what's already there rather than replace it which is what would happen if that was off so i'm going to use wait for note instead of count off so instead of hearing a bar count off when i enable this button which is wait for note and we can optionally enable in the preferences the f13 key for that we do that in the midi section in the preferences we can use wait for note and the recording will only start when the first MIDI note is received. So I'm going to record enable this and we hear the tick going, but it's only going to actually start when I hit my first note and it's going to loop over and over and merge each time through. So there we go. Let's listen back. I'm going to turn the click off. Sounds good, except for that one snare note. It got quantized to the wrong grid increment. I must have played it really early. And I'm going to correct that right now in the MIDI event list real quick. So let's go there. And I know it's the first snare hit, and it's the D. There's the first D, and it should be on B2, and it's on the 16th note before. So it's bar one. I'm going to click in that field to highlight it. There we go. And I can use the period key now to move between those fields. So I want the second field to read beat two. So I'm typing in two and the next one defaults to zero. So let's hit enter and return to accept it. And that's it. So let's close that and it should be corrected now. And I know that I want to lower that symbol crash in the last bar as well. So let's go back to the event list. I'll do it there and I'll use the keyboard shortcut option equals and that's Alt equals on Windows. And I know it's at the end, and I think this is the note right here. That's it. And this field here shows the velocity of each note. So let me double click there, and I'll try maybe 62. And now let's close that and listen. That should bring it down in level. Great. So there's a little overview of MIDI recording using loop playback to loop record and using MIDI merge to add in on each pass round. And we can use the shortcut, the number nine on the numeric keypad to toggle the MIDI merge mode on and off. And F13 will do that one if you have it set in the preferences. See if more in the next video.